Today I have Dr. Mark Grixty with me to tell us about the new and exciting development of brain spotting therapy, a powerful brain and body based approach to healing deep emotional wounds. Hi Mark, so I've heard a lot of fascinating things about brain spotting. Could you tell us more? Mm, yes, thank you. It, it's an exciting time with recent developments in the understanding of the relationship between attachment, neurobiology and trauma. Specialists including Van der Kolk, Dan Siegel, Stephen Porges, Alan Shaw, Bonnie Badenoch, they've all contributed immensely to the evolving theory and new indications in psychotherapy. If these wonderful developments could be integrated and applied into a focused therapeutic approach, one that then enhances the processing through using a point in visual space, through using an eye position, then you have brain spotting therapy. Brain spotting therapy was discovered by Dr. David Grand in 2003 and has since been developed and talked to many thousands of therapists all around the world. At the core of brain spotting is the dual attunement framework. So this is like a double helix that interweaves the all-important relational with the neurobiological attunement, fostering the conditions for focused, powerful, deep processing and allowing for optimum healing. I'll begin by describing relational attunement with a, a touching personal experience, if I could. So some quite a few years ago now, my baby son was born. And just a few minutes later, I held him in my arms and looked him straight into his eyes. I felt an overwhelming impulse to poke out my tongue at him. And to my amazement, he stuck out his tongue right back at me. I was totally amazed. But I now understand that what happened that day was the first moment of pure neurophysiological relational attunement. A deep, implicit right brain to right brain intersubjective exchange in the affect resonance. The relevance of the right brain body bias can be understood further as we observe how in the first year of life the infant begins to learn to regulate their emotions, pleasant or distressing, through dyadic regulation with their parent. In attunement the caregiver and infant spend long periods of time with eyes locked in a non-verbal communication prosodic vocalizations, shared body gestures, as together they experience body-based states of internal autonomic arousal, if you will. Alan Shaw advances the importance of this dialogic process as the carer and the infant attune, experiencing both relational rupture and repair. An essential process in the development of the socially sculpted brain the regulation of the autonomic nervous system and, importantly, the developing sense of self. When these processes of relating are applied to the therapeutic context, we can appreciate how the implicit right brain to right brain of the therapist and the client are non-verbally communicating huge amounts of information at levels beneath awareness. The flow of communications at this level may include intonation, the volume of the voice, facial expressions, body posture, movement, um, eye contact and, and body sensations. So in brain spotting, these essential developmental considerations are all highly significant as the person-to-person -person attunement is starkly different from other ways of attending to a client at both the explicit and implicit levels as the therapist tracks the client's experience attending to the verbal, somatic and unconscious interpersonal interactions. The embodied brain spotting therapist seeks to match the rhythmic crescendos and decrescendos of the client, of the client's regulated and dysregulated autonomic nervous system. When we consider the developments in understanding emotional co-regulation in line with Stephen Porges polyvagal theory, we can, one can appreciate the important role of this attunement to enhance social engagement as to come out of trauma and dissociation, safe and secure mammalian attachment is extremely important. 
Indeed, Shaw says that if psychotherapy is an, invest is an investigation into the intersubjective space between client and therapist, then as a profession we need to take our bodily reactions much more seriously than we have so far because the body is the very basis of human subjectivity. Indeed, Van der Kolk adds to this in asserting how neuroscience research shows that the only way we can change the way we feel is by becoming aware of our inner experience and learn to befriend what is going on inside. So that's the interpersonal attunement. <clears throat> the second part of the dual attunement framework in brain spotting is the revolutionary neurobiological attunement. This seeks to harness the almost infinite potential of the brain. Amongst others, Dan Siegel reports that the human brain has an estimated 100 billion neurons. Too often a therapist can assume to know what is happening in the client, an impossible task considering the immensity of the brain and the limitations of the cognitive conscious mind. In brain spotting, the therapist takes an alternative position named the uncertainty principle and follows the client just as the tail follows the comet through space. This removes unnecessary obstacles so that the human brain can self-scan, self-regulate, reorganize outside of conscious awareness with optimum efficiency. Now, here's the really revolutionary part. Brain spotting integrates and transcends these developments through the discovery that a person feeling activated in their body by a traumatic or upsetting emotional event will have a corresponding eye position, also known as a brain spot. The brain spot is located by finding an eye position with the assistance of the therapist in a careful and attuned way. There are numerous ways for the therapist and client to collaboratively locate and hold the brain spot and often a simple extendable pointer can be used for this purpose. The therapist might typically slowly move the pointer across the client's visual field using verbal and somatic or body feedback to determine the eye position that best accesses the brain spot. Then with a natural but fixed gaze, the client can continue to look at this point in space, allowing emotional activation to be processed right down to completion. Or in other words, guided by their bodily sensations, the client looks out to actually look in to the emotional midbrain to locate something that remains unresolved and then hold this visual position until adaptive orientation is achieved and the emotional charge is dissipated. The aim of brain spotting is to work at this deeper level to process through emotional and body-based conditions strengthen resources and resilience and achieve permanent neuroplastic change. <laughs> it has been so exciting to see how brain spotting therapy can be integrated with my other tried and trusted approaches to provide the optimum space for the body and brain to access natural healing. In the profound attunement with a the therapist, it trusts in a true and authentic process that goes far deeper than words alone, where anything is possible. <laughs>